<laughs> Joining me now is Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel, former assistant U.S. attorney, and Mike Davis, president and founder of the Article 3 Project. Now, Saul, back in April, it was reported that um, the DOJ was looking at four charges. So is this right, what we heard from all those commentators, that this is just kind of par for the course, the other two go away, and this, this is how it all kind of you know, plays out in a plea? We don't have enough facts yet, Laura, to know if it's a sweetheart deal, but it's certainly a sweet deal for, for Hunter Biden, uh, and it doesn't look very normal to me at all. We don't have the plea agreement yet, or what's called the factual basis, which is part of it. So I withhold final judgment, but I can tell you uh, that it is unusual to let an individual get pretrial diversion on a felony gun charge and particularly mm. here, where in addition to that, you've got two tax misdemeanors that they've charged. I also want to make this point, which is he was charged with willful failure to pay taxes. That's a misdemeanor. But the felony of tax evasion takes very little additional, additionally to prove. The only additional element there. Uh, is that there is a affirmative act of concealment. And under the case law, the case law is very broad on what that act could be. It could be as simple as lying to an IRS agent or filling out something incorrectly on that tax return. So uh, all of that leads me to really want to ask a lot more questions. And then the final question is, if you're going to give somebody a sweet deal like this, did you put him under oath? And bring in the pro and bring in people who might be investigating the broader Biden family issues, and say, "Buddy, if you want a deal like this, uh, you're going to talk to us for a long time. You're going to proffer with us." Now, Mike, when you think about how this all ends up playing out, it is a way for the Democrats to say, "Well, justice was done, right? This, the, there, this was a process, and the process played out." and kind of get it off the table for the election. That sounds very cynical, I realize, for me to say that. But given how people now, a lot of people, believe this Justice Department operates, you can understand that feeling. Because it's, yeah, hard, it's hard to imagine that Republic, a Republican front runner's son with a felony gun charge would be able to kind of sweep it, sweep it under the rug with two years probation. Justice was not done here. A cover-up was completed by the Biden Justice Department. And this David Weiss, who the left-wing media says was a Trump appointee, that's, it's not that simple. The two Democrat senators in Delaware picked him as their U.S. attorney. I was the chief counsel for nominations when he went through the process. I know that they're the ones who picked him. And David Weiss has sat on evidence uh, about Biden's corruption for years. He sat on evidence protecting Hunter Biden and Joe Biden for years. And then they come to this sweetheart deal where they're going to cover up, they're going to they're essentially cover up 2017 and 2018 tax evasion by Hunter Biden and his business partner was Joe Biden when he allegedly took, they both allegedly took a $10 million bribe from Burisma and changed U.S. policy. This is a cover-up, plain and simple. Now, Saul, um, the DOJ says that the investigation is ongoing, but Hunter Biden's uh, attorney feels differently. Watch this. My understanding is that we're done. I think there's going to be a court proceeding. I think there are going to be agreements that are going to come out about the court proceeding. And I think we'll, everyone will see what happens once that occurs. Would you make a deal, though, if you thought there were more charges coming? Would I make a deal? Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Saul, what do you make of that? Sounds like he's a pretty good white collar defense attorney, and he certainly got a good deal for his client. And I've heard the theory uh, that the reason DOJ said that is because it's easier to resist congressional demands for information uh, when you've got an ongoing investigation, and I find that uh, very plausible. But, but again, um, when you talk about a possible further investigation, one thing for sure, this is a very, very beneficial deal for Hunter Biden. And I would like to know uh, what they demanded of him and what forum, under oath in front of a grand jury, a recorded interview, uh, in order to get his information. And did they even attempt to do that? 
You know, a lot of times, I've talked about this for years, when we talk about IG Michael Horowitz, mm -hmm. it's how broadly you define the investigation from the beginning. It looks like this was defined very narrowly from what we can tell. Again, Mike, the cynics thinking on this is that if you didn't know better, you would think that almost Joe Biden knew that this was going to play out this way. I mean, he very boldly took his son on that, you know, overseas trip recently. He's, he's been in and out of the White House a lot, right? If you, if you thought your son truly was vulnerable to, you know, jail time and felony prosecution, maybe you wouldn't have done that? Or is that just Again, we're just so negative on, on these you know, law enforcement agencies and DOJ in particular. Yeah, so Biden's attorney general wants President Trump to die in prison over a fight with Biden's librarians and bureaucrats over presidential records. Biden's attorney general doesn't want the president's son to spend a day in prison for clear tax evasion and a clear gun felony. Saul and Mike, thank you for both for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.